Now, many students, including myself, use the scalar product and the vector product or cross product without really understanding how they are derived. So today, I'm going to show you how it's derived and answer these burning questions on why the dot product was defined as a weird operation, right? And the cross product as well. So we have the dot product is defined as, uh, let's say we have two vectors, u and v, right? Where u is equal to u1, u2, u3, and v is equal to v1, v2, v3, right? And the x, y, and z components respectively. Right, u dot v, we get u1, v1, plus u2, v2, plus u3, v3. So essentially what you're doing is you're multiplying the x components with the x components y and y and z and z, right? And summing all of them up as one sum. So we first need to define what the scalar product is before telling us why this dot over here represents this operation here. So the scalar product is when you have two vectors uh, on the same plane, let's say we have u and v, and making an angle with theta with one another. So we have a triangle formed by u, v, and on the other side it's u minus v. So it doesn't really matter whether it's u minus v or v minus u because you're going to take the modulus, right, which is the exact length of the, uh, the, length of the, the size of the triangle. And you're going to plug in the cosine rule in order to get the cosine theta out. So we have, so let's use the cosine rule. We have uh, modulus u squared plus modulus of v squared minus 2uv cosine theta is equal to modulus of u minus v whole thing squared. Right, so when you have modulus of a mod, so when you have a modulus, sorry, when you have a square of a modulus, right, Essentially, what you're doing is you are removing the square root. So a modulus is equal to square root of uh, x component squared, y component squared, z component squared. Right, the Pythagoras theorem. So we have, when we, have, when we have a square of the modulus, we remove the square root, essentially giving us the sum of these squares of the individual components x, y, z. Right, so upon simplification, we have u1 squared plus u2 squared plus u3 squared plus v1 squared, plus v2 squared, plus v3 squared, minus 2 times u v cosine theta. So I'm, I'm leaving the modulus u and v in this form. So, because it looks like the final product, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to touch it. And uh, on the right hand side, we have uh, u minus v squared. So it's u1 minus v1 squared, plus u2 minus v2 squared, plus u3 minus v3 squared. Alright, so... I'm going to simplify the right-hand side. We get u1 squared plus v1 squared minus 2 times u1 v1 plus u2 squared plus v2 squared minus 2 times u2 v2. And same thing for u3 v3. All right, really verbal diarrhea here. 2 times u3 v3. All right, so now let's do the cancellations. On the left-hand side, we have the squares of u, which is u1, u2, u3. And for v... We have v1, v2, v3. So that leaves us, that leaves us with uh, something that's really looking more and more like what we want. It's equal to minus 2u1, v1, minus 2u2, v2, minus 2u3, v3. So dividing by negative 2, we get the end result. And so we get u1, v1. We get something that looks like the scalar product, right? So this really smart guy, after, after coming up with the uh, simplification of the equation, he decided that this shall now be defined as the scalar product. So this is now defined as uh, u1, u2, u3, dot v1, v2, v3, and this dot shall be known as the scalar product. So u cross v is a little more complicated because this really smart guy defined the cross product as this mass over here. So the, the, final, the final function of the cross product is actually to uh, get this formula out. So it's modulus of u cross v is equal to the modulus of u, modulus of v times sine theta. Right? There are also other applications, but this is one of the main formulas of the cross product. And so we, we need to define what this x really means in the cross product. So the definition of the cross product is when we have two vectors, again u and v, uh, making an angle with theta with one another, 
right? They, there's a there's a vector that's perpendicular to both of these. So imagine it in three D, right? This this vector w, let's call it w, where it's equal to w one, w two, w three, is perpendicular to both u and v, right? If you can imagine it in three D, and this gives rise to two form two equations, and that's u dot w is equal to zero, and v dot w is equal to zero. Right, because if you go back to the scalar product, we have uh, we have u u dot v is equal to uh, u modulus u modulus v cosine theta. Right, and that gives you uh, zero when you have theta is equal to pi over two. Right, you substitute this into the equation, you get left hand side is equal to zero. So that gives rise to two equations. So the first equation would be u1 plus, sorry, u1 w1 plus u2 w2 plus u3 w3 is equal to 0. And the second equation would be v1 w1 plus v2 w2 plus v3 w3 is equal to 0. And now I'm going to relate these two equations together via the first term. So that's the first equation times v1 uh, and you minus it with the second equation times u1. So we have uh, we have uh, the first term eliminates, right? So we have u2 v1 w3 uh, w2 plus u2 u3 v1 w3 minus uh, u1 v2 w2 minus u1 v3 w3 is equal to zero. So we have W2 times U2 V1 minus U1 V2 is equal to W3. Uh, what's it equal to? We have U1 V3 minus U3 V1. All right, so these terms inside the brackets look more and more like the terms of the cross product. So let's not rush into that first. Let's, let's cross divide. So we have W2 is equal to W2 over U1 V3 minus U3 V1 equal to w3 over u2 v1 minus u1 v2. So the first part of the uh, cross product solving is done. Uh, so this is the first simultaneous equation. So this is sort of like equation 3. And now we're going to go on to change, uh, we're going to eliminate the second term instead. So it's this term over here. So how we do that is we multiply the first equation by v2 instead minus second equation times u2. Right, so we have u1 v2 w1 plus u3 v2 w3 minus uh, we have u2 v1 w1 minus u2 v3 w3 and that's equal to 0. So we get w1 times u1 v2 minus u2 v1 is equal to w3 times What's it equal to? It's equal to u2 v3 minus u3 v2. We want to make this equation look like this equation over here, right? So we have w1 over u2 v3 minus u3 v2 is equal to w3 over u1 v2 minus u2 v1. So that's the opposite of this one over here because it's u2 v1 minus u1 v2, right? They swapped around. So, so the... Uh, the way to do it is to multiply both sides by negative 1. So let's multiply this by negative 1. We get w2 over u3 v1 minus u1 v3 is equal to w3 over u1 v2 minus u2 v1. Right, so now these, these two equations are now linked to one another. right? Because this can also be equal to w2 over u3 v1 minus u1 v3 and let's say all these constants right these are all constants and they're all equal to this number k where k where k is a real number we actually can express w right the components of w can now be expressed in terms of the constants up there so we have w1 w2 w3 is equal to k times u2 v3 minus u3 v2 we have also have k times u1 v2 minus u2 v1 and we have 
k times u3 v1 minus u1, sorry, for the second row, it's, uh, it's over here. It's a little bit confusing. So it's k times u3 v1 minus u1 v3, right? Because w2 is equal to this multiplied out by k. And for w3, it's k times u1 v2 minus u2 v1, right? And you realize that this red uh, equation over here looks exactly like that one up there, right? Only that k is inside the equations. So the really smart guy that came out with the cross product decided that u cross v is going to be equal to w. Right? So he wants to eliminate the k values and the only way to do it is to let k is equal to 1. Why? Right? Because the, the, the cross product is entirely up to you. Right? You can define this operation as having w equal the final product of which is w, which is the cross product of u and v, two known vectors to be equal to 2 times everything, right? You can let k is equal to 2, but k is equal to 1 is the most uh, simplified version. So why not let k be equal to 1? So now the cross product is defined as, so we remove all the k's, right? The cross product is now defined as w is equal to this thing. Now for sine theta, you can't really prove it using an intuitive way. So we have to use the two formulas we already know. So the first one would be the dot product of u and v, or the scalar product is equal to the product of modulus of u, modulus of v, and cosine theta. And we also have the cross product defined as such, which is going to help us later on. So we have the modulus of u cross v is equal to modulus of u, modulus v times sine theta. So in order to make our lives easier, as you remember, the modulus of a vector is going to be the square root of the, in the sum of the squares of the individual components. So in order to make our lives easier, make things less clogged up, we are going to square both sides. So we have u cross v holding squared is equal to u squared v squared sine squared theta. Right, so we're going to start proving from the left hand side, which is the, the square of the modulus of u cross v. Right, and that's the sum of the squares of the individual components. So we have u2 v3 minus u3 v2 squared, yada yada, u1 v3 minus u3 v1 squared, plus u1 v2 minus u2 v1 squared. Right, and that's going to give us a whole chunk of values. So u2 squared v3 squared minus, sorry, plus u3 squared v2 squared minus 2 times u2 v3 u3 v2 plus u1 v3. So u1 squared v3 squared plus u3 squared v1 squared minus 2 times u1 v3 u3 v1 plus, we're going to continue on with the last one. So you're extra careful here, don't want to make any careless mistakes. 2 times u1, v2, u2, v1. Alright, and that's equal to, so you realize here that there's 6 values right, that we can make sense of, and that's u2, v3 squared, u3, v2 squared. Right? u1, v3 squared, u3, v1 squared. So there's a lot of pairs of u and v's right, that give rise to squares. So I'm now going to multiply... All right, so I want to get the modulus of u out and the modulus of v out. So I'm going to try to multiply it by the modulus of u times the modulus of v whole thing squared. So we have, so I want to achieve something like modulus of v, modulus of u times modulus of v whole thing squared, right? So that's u1 squared plus u2 squared plus u3 squared times v1 squared plus v2 squared plus v3 squared, right? And if you think about it, that's going to give me this thing in red, which is u1 squared v1 squared plus u1 squared v2 squared, right? All the way, right? All the possible nine combinations, v1 squared v1 squared plus v2 squared plus v3 squared, sorry, u2 squared plus u2 times v3 squared plus u3 squared times v1 squared plus u3 squared times v2 squared plus u3 squared plus v3 squared. Sorry, u3 squared times v3 squared. And you realize that the pairs of u and v, right, the only ones that don't exist in this line over here are those that have the same number in subscript. So what I mean by that is u1 and v1 doesn't occur. Uh, u2 and v2 don't occur. And u3 and v3 doesn't occur as well in this line over here. So we have, right, we have everything Right, except u1, v1, u2, v2, and u3, v3. So we're going to have to use this product. We're going to have to minus it away. So we have to minus u1 squared v1 squared minus u2 
uh, squared v2 squared minus u3 squared v3 squared. So this makes sense for all the u, v, u and v squared terms. And now we're going to have to minus away the rest of the terms, which is the really ugly one. All right, so it's all minus. So let's change everything to plus. So we put a bracket here, and we're going to make everything into plus. All right, so that's less complicated. U, all right, so this is where the verbal diarrhea comes in. Plus 2 times u1 v3 u3 v1 plus 2 times u1 v2 u2 v1. Close the bracket. All right, so we already have on the left-hand side, right, we already have what we want on the left-hand side, right, which is the u modulus squared times v modulus squared. All right, so now all we have to do is to simplify the right side. And if you look carefully, the right side has pairs of u and v values that have the same subscript, which is the 1, 2, and 3. And this looks like something we want because we want to use the scalar product of u and v to get cosine theta, which eventually becomes sine theta. And if you look carefully, this whole chunk here, right, it magically condenses to the square of u dot v, the scalar product of u and v. And let me show you why. So we have u dot v is equal to u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus u3 v3, right? Already a clue to square both sides. When we square both sides, you get the square of, so we have u1 v1, okay, let's write it out, u2 v3 plus u3 v3 times u1 v1 plus, so according to simple multiplication, 3 times 3, you should get 9 terms, u3 v3. So the first three terms would be u1 squared v1 squared plus u2 squared v2 squared plus u3 squared v3 squared, right? So they multiply each other, right? And you get three terms. And the last six terms are pretty much pairs because we have u3 v3 times u1 v1, right? And also have u3 v3 times u1 v1. So we get, so we get uh, u1 v1 times, let's say, u2 v2, for example. So you get u1 u2 v1 v2. But at the same time, the u1 v1 over here all right, multiplies with this u2 v2, so we get 2 times that. And going by the same logic, we have u2 v2 times u3 v3, right? The second possible combination. And the third possible combination, we have 2 times u1 v1 times u3 v3, right? And these blue values over here can be mapped to these values up here. All right, so eventually we have the modulus of u squared, modulus of v squared minus that. All right, and using the formula up here, right, this can simplify to modulus of u squared, modulus of v squared, minus the modulus of u, modulus of v, cosine theta squared. And that gives us modulus of u squared, modulus of v squared, times 1 minus cosine theta whole thing squared. And that gives us modulus of u squared, modulus of v squared, sine squared theta.